Father Guzmandi, our dear brother priests and deacons, uh, fellow religious, if there's some religious, concentrated religious here. Uh, I know there's at least one seminarian, so beloved seminarian, and sisters and brothers in Christ. Where do I begin? Well, first of all, I think I should express our words of congratulation to those who celebrate the sacrament of confirmation today. <laughs> That three of you have made your families very, very proud and have made the church much richer by your commitment to Jesus and to his church through the completion of the sacraments of initiation today. Now, St. Charles Borromeo referred to the sacraments as kisses from Christ. And we believe that when we celebrate the sacrament, Jesus comes to us in a very particular way and embraces us. And they're not ceremonies, they're moments of encounter with Jesus. And that's happened in a very special way today in your lives. When he has kissed you and breathed into you the gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, which will make you hopefully strong and confident members of the church. And the church very much needs strong and confident members who are willing to profess their faith publicly in a world that does not believe. So uh, we're made richer, the church is made richer by your commitment today. So be faithful to your promises to the Lord as you celebrate the completion of the baptismal promises. Uh, the, the ritual calls for the bishop to say something to the sponsors. Who are the sponsors for, for confirmation? Just raise your hand so I know I should, how to address you. Okay, very good. Well, I don't think you need this instruction, but many uh, sponsors in the church at large do today. We, we people choose their sponsors because they're relatives or because uh, they've been nice to the family, or in some cases maybe because they thought they would give them a big confirmation gift. <laughs> but the real reason we, we choose sponsors or should choose sponsors is that they are for us examples of Christian faith and church. And please be that for the people that you have sponsored today. It's not an honorary position, it's a real position in the church. Just like baptismal sponsors. And we call them godparents. So you have that responsibility to give a good example. And not only a good example, but with strong words so they don't live up to the promises they make to the Lord through their confirmation. Now, all of us in this room today are actually their sponsors, because they look to all of us for a good example. And that's what the church is about. There's no reason for the church if we don't share faith and give good example to one another. We can have more enjoyable friends somewhere else. You know, it's good that the members of the parish are our friends, but what's important is that they are models of faith and commitment for us. So when we celebrate this confirmation, we're reminded of our own confirmation and recommit ourselves to living our own baptism of promises faithfully, more faithfully today than we have before. I'd like to express my gratitude also, uh, first of all, to the original members of this parish who have been so gracious about uh, the loan of the parish, at least for a while before it becomes your own, uh, to this uh, uh, Catholic Latin Mass community. Uh, we're grateful to the people of St. Mary's Parish. We're also grateful to Father Aaron and the members of St. Matthew's Parish who have assumed the responsibility uh, for, this, for this church building. And hopefully we'll make arrangements for its ears and, and an independent parish of its own sometime soon. But we, we all need to be grateful for that. Uh, I was ordained a bishop 31 years ago last month about the same time that uh, good Pope St. John Paul II decided to establish the possibility of celebrating the traditional form of the sacraments in the Roman Catholic Church. It was a very courageous move on his part and a very difficult one uh, because I'm sure there were many people who objected to him doing that. I was the first ordained a bishop for the Diocese of Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, do you know where that is? I joke that about that because people say that uh, people in Philadelphia don't know anything west of the Schuylkill River. <laughs> uh, 
I don't think that's true. But South Dakota's you know, out there in the flyover part of the United States. Um, the reason I became a bishop there is my grandmother was an American Indian, and there were a lot of Indians in the diocese of Robinson, South Dakota. But there were also a lot of uh, traditional Catholics there who rejected the teachings of the Second Vatican Council, and it invited the Society of St. Pius X to come to the communities and celebrate the liturgy. So when I arrived in the Diocese of Rapid City, I had three communities of Catholics who were separated from the unity, the full unity of the church. And I was blessed to begin a relationship with the priestly fraternity of St. Peter, uh, which is serving this community today. So my relationship with Father Osmondi's community goes back uh, more than 30 years. And within a year of their coming to the Diocese of Philadelphia, those separated communities no longer existed, and they were able to bring the unity of the church uh, in a very visible way, back, bring back the unity of the church in a very visible way. So Father, I've been very grateful to the community for that and for your consistent uh, commitment to, uh, in the midst of celebrating the traditional form of liturgy, to, to work for the unity, complete unity of the church. Uh, the community also came to uh, the Archdiocese of Denver, where I served as bishop before coming here, and we're delighted to invite you finally to the diocese. Is it two years ago now, or a year and a half ago? I don't remember. When you get old, all that kind of uh, becomes more blur. But I'm grateful that they're here, and I'm sure you are too, right? Yes. You're allowed to applaud at this moment. expressing gratitude for his presence and the presence of the priestly fraternity and his opportunity to celebrate the sacraments according to the Tridentine tradition. Uh, so I'm, I'm delighted that this has, this decision has met with such a positive response on the part of our people. But you have to work for the unity of the church. We need it more today than ever. You know, the church has been seriously shaken in terms of its unity so it's important for all of us to love the church, to be faithful to the church, even in the midst of all those difficulties, and to speak up clearly and strongly about what is true and what has always been the faithful. The, the teachings of the church and has been embraced by the faithful through the centuries. And we stand on the shoulders of the saints and martyrs who have gone before us. Uh, we um, we been praying the, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, uh, since the time of Mary and the Apostles, they prayed that prayer, we pray it today. It's the prayer of, of the unity of the church. Um, and we need to make sure that we do our part in the 21st century to embrace the church, its teaching in, in all its details, without exception, and to invite others by our way of life and by our words to do the same. So let's together work for the unity of the church, which is at the heart of Jesus. He prayed that, that we might be one as he and the Father are one. And that's pretty seriously one, right? The unity of the Holy Trinity. Uh, we ask the Lord to bless us with that, with that grace. So, uh, in an ordinary circumstance, I'd ask you if you have any questions. But I don't think that's, this is the appropriate time to do that, since we're celebrating the uh, commitment of, of mature adult faith on the part of these three young people. So uh, let's give them a good example and show them that we love them by congratulating them at the end of the celebration. Thank you,